Who has the first one? Right here in the middle. Go ahead and just speak loudly. So. Okay, so basically the dog represents my little cousin that was murdered. Um, it's an unsolved, it's an unsolved uh, homicide. And it's basically just shedding light on his name and keeping him, his memory alive. Okay, on your right against the wall, please. Michael Brandon from Center Down South. I heard an interview with Coach Morse this year about you moving inside to defensive tackle. And uh, basically, I think it was before you decided on whether to come back or go to the NFL. And he said he advised you to don't come back if you don't buy in. He said you have bought in. Uh, can you talk about that conversation you had with Coach Morris? Be straightforward. He was basically like, if you're not going to buy in, you should go ahead and go. If you, if you feel like this is not the position or things like that, um, you're not going to be a leader on this team, you should just, you know what I'm saying, go and go to the NFL and take your talents. Go ahead and cash in. I felt like I could be all that I could be a leader on this team, buy into the position, buy into the weight game, and everything like that. So I came back. To your left over here, standing up. Uh, Sheldon Haygood with WBRC here in Birmingham. Uh, you, you mentioned the doll and the family member, but why that particular doll? Is it, does that represent something, or is his name uh, that, or what? Uh, no, not at all. This doll is just, I like Chucky, so, you know, uh, that's why I got Chucky. I didn't think to get Annabelle or nothing like that. To your right on the second row. Soraya Ponder, Tuscaloosa News. Yes, Building off of another question that was previously asked, um, how was the transition going from outside to inside? Yes, no, um, it wasn't too hard. It was, it was just basically gaining weight. I played inside my freshman year, so I was, I was at three take um, in a previous defense. Um, we was in a 4-3. So it, it wasn't too hard to go ahead and go back for my senior year. And last year, I played some inside as well. I played both inside and outside. So it's, it's not going to be a tough transition at all. Right here in the middle, third row. So Chad was saying, I think there's 52 total freshmen. When you think of a number that astronomical, what comes to mind? Uh, I don't know how many freshmen people come in every year. I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I guess, I guess it's a big number. I don't remember how many uh, my class had. But I, I can tell you they feel with talent. It's, it's a lot of them, and they ready to work. They've been working. They, they hungry. You can, you can see it in their eyes, man. They, they just want to be great, and, I, and I, love, I love seeing it. Okay, right here in the middle. Go ahead. I wouldn't say so much slept on. It's, it's understandable. We were 2 and 10 last year. So if we were 2 and 10, why would you expect us to be anything better? You know, so I can't, I can't be upset that we're 2 and 10. We made the bed. We're going to lay in it. We've been laying in it. And now it's time to get up out of it. Again, on the second row here, to your right. Hey, being a leader on this team, um, what um, identity are you guys going for this season on defense? Just, just basically working, making sure that, that we make the plays that we're supposed to make and make some of the plays that we're not supposed to make, making plays, just being attacking, being aggressive, and not giving up points. That's basically that's, that's all I can say. Like, we just, we just working. We have a few more minutes. Ray Kate, right here in the third row. So some of the younger, the, some some of the younger ones that are coming up probably would be like Isaiah Nichols. Um, you can see him through summer. He's been changing his body. He's been changing his his work ethic. Like he's he's always been hard, but he's been going harder. Like you can tell he's he's ready to work. You can tell he's ready to 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 put the finished product on on Saturdays. To your right against the wall again. I know this off season, uh, Coach Morris took away all the players' gears, all the coaches' gears, it made you guys earn everything, I think even the locker room. Uh, can you talk about that and just the fact that, uh, do you think that, that really motivated you guys to, to work harder this off season? I most definitely, when you strip to something you're so used to, it, it brings something else out of you. Um, it's basically every, every matters, every rep, every second, every minute, every team meeting, every 
skills and drills, everything matters. So you need to attack everything. And when they took you out of your clothes, it basically was humbling you. And some people were opposed to it, but they started understanding like it was needed. When you two and 10, you don't deserve <laughs> gear. You, you deserve what you get. And we got what we deserve. And now we worked for something else and we earned what we deserve now. Again, right here to your left. So, so what's been the biggest difference with Kenny Ingram and uh, how has he impacted? What, 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 does he do anything different than, than John Scott did? Um, the, the biggest thing is basically just um, let, letting us be more, a little more mobile. Um, being able to pop it from, you, you hear him say all the time, pop it. It's from, you can go from B to A gap to the opposite A gap. Just, just being mobile and making sure that you and the other defensive tackle are in alignment with each other and making sure you guys are feeding off each other and playing off each other so you guys can make play and not be standing still. To your left on the second row. Can you talk a little bit about the attack drill that was instilled in, uh, during the spring? Um, I'm trying to remember which one. I really can't remember. I think it's the one where, from what I understand, it's the one where it's three teammates, 10-yard drill, navigate about 10 yards. OK, OK, OK. Uh, John Chavis implemented that. He brought that from when he was at LSU. It's basically um, fights of the will, like who's going to give up first, who's going to keep fighting, who's going to who's going to give it they are to get to their bag. So, and who's going to make sure that they don't get to the bag. It was basically just test of wheels. To your right in the camera bank. Uh, Rhea from WBUA in Tuscaloosa. Um, I've seen that you've been on the SEC honor roll every year that you've been in college. And how are you able to manage both playing football and D1 football while also being so academically advanced? It's, uh, it's, it's not easy at all. It's basically just time management. Uh, I mean, it's, I understand that a lot of people have a lot of different things going on. Like, you might have something going on at home. You might have something going on, like, just in your household while you're in college, and you're just doing that by yourself. But you got to try to reach out and get help, like, from tutors and things, it's things as such. And they can help you. Your academic counselors and things like that can help you basically achieve everything you need to. We have time for two or three more right here in the camera bank again. Paul, Paul asked you about the doll again. Um, yes, sir. Th that's, that's something that's more out of the box for media days. Uh, it's, it's, it's a bold thing to do. So why was it important for you to do that? Because I want them to see everything that I see. Like, um, I used to go back to the, to the city and tell them everything that I see and everything that'd be going on. They'd be like, dang, it's crazy. But he was never able to see it. He was never able to come to a game. You know, he was supposed to, but then, you know what I'm saying, things, other things happen, other things were inspired. But now he's able to see it all, and I'm able to keep him with me. Do we have anything else? Okay, right here in the middle, second row. So, so how much talk has there been about trying to improve in the area of takeaways, just being more aggressive and bringing more pressure and, and trying to create more in terms of getting those takeaways under Chief? Um, Chief definitely has been putting the emphasis on all, on all the takeaways, all the sacks and pressure and all of that. He's been making sure that we're working hard and making sure we're explosive enough to be able to get to those plays. And, and not just getting to those plays, but making those plays. There's the difference. We probably missed out on 12 sacks last year, just missed, missed tackles and not wrapping up. So now we're trying to make sure we're putting the emphasis on that. And when we, make, when we get to those plays, because you're going to get to them, especially in John Chavis' defense, just making them. To your far right, but talk straight ahead when you're answering. You bring a prop, people continue to talk about it. Give me the name of the family member and the circumstances behind that shooting. Uh, John Neal. Um, the circumstances, I can tell you. Um, he basically went missing the day before, and then the next day he was found um, in the back of the car, and they set the car on fire. That's all I can tell you. Anything else? Thank you very much for your time. Good luck this season. Thank you.